Mr. Wahlberg, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. And thank you, Acting Secretary, for being here today. I want to follow up on my friend and colleague from Connecticut uh, relative to the uh, H.R. 618 legislation that we've offered to enable nurse practitioners and uh, physician assistants uh, to uh, be able to practice uh, with a, um, uh, under FECA, which hasn't been updated since 1974. That's when I was married. And in those 50 years, I've had to update myself over those years to make sure I made it to the 50th wedding anniversary soon. Uh, so I would hope you would support us with that legislation uh, to, to update FECA so we can add to, in an in a evolving situation in healthcare, these um, component parts that can do a great job. So I have your commitment on that. Yes, thank you very much, Congressman. Like I said, we've definitely identified that also as a challenge in the system uh, that creates problems for, uh, for, for people who, um, who are seeking uh, uh, workers' compensation claims. So I absolutely have my I commitment to work that. with you. Let me move to two, two issues uh, here that have very similar concerns. First being the overtime rule question. Um, um, as you know, DOL, DOL recently published its overtime rule, which unfortunately attempts to revive policies from the 2016 rule that the courts threw out. Uh, they threw out for being arbitrary and capricious, and specifically the rule seeks to impose aut automatic updates uh, to the overtime threshold every three years, a policy which a witness at our Workforce Protection Subcommittee hearing testified would likely violate the Administrative Procedure Act because this would not allow for notice and comment on the updates. Um, the fiduciary, fiduciary rule question is, is almost the exact same. Uh, along the same lines of previous invalidated rules, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit found that the 2016 fiduciary rule exceeded DOL's authority. The department recently finalized fiduciary rule would cover the same sales practices as the 2016 rule. So, I guess I have the same question for both those issues, the overtime rule and the fiduciary rule. Um, why do you expect that the courts will, will view uh, the 2024 rules on these two issues differently than they ruled before when they threw it out? So, Congressman, in the process of making the rules, we did engage in the process of, uh, we, we had listening sessions, we had an open comment period, we responded to and took into account all the different comments. Um, but did you check the court record on it? Yes. So, we are very confident that the rules not only um, are within our authority, but that they take into account uh, the, um, the, the existing case law about what what was, uh, what, why the prior rules were struck down. And so- Why would um, these be any different? The, oh, sales, the sales rule and the fiduciary rule, um, I mean, they, they, is in violation. The, the, so I, I don't know how much uh, you want me to get into the details of each rule, but they are, um, they take into account the, what the court said about why the prior rules could not stand. Uh, and they, um, they're, they're, they're different. I, you know, the, the re retirement <laughs> security rule, for example, that, uh, that's, is, that's, is, yeah. is the definition of a fiduciary is different. Um, the, um, the, the, what is covered under it is different. I mean, the, it, it does, uh, well, I'm, trust I'm, me, I, we, I we want to make sure that yeah, when we go through I don't read it the, that way at all, and I don't know how the court will read it that way at all, so I guess we wait and see, but otherwise it's a waste of time it's, it's concerning for the industries themselves when we're going back and doing something that, I mean, the uncertainty that goes on relative to these two rules, the slap back, back and forth, but in these two cases, the court determined it. So let me move to another one. Um, I mean, Congressman, I have a simpler answer. Independent contractor, direct seller issues of concern. The department's, uh, Department of Labor's independent contractor rule will have a devastating impact on the ability of millions of Americans to engage in flexible work in the modern economy. At the Workforce Protection Subcommittee hearing in February, I asked Wage and Hour Division Administrator Jessica Lohman about the clarity that would be provided under the rule to industries such as real estate agents and direct sellers who are specifically classified as independent contractors under the Internal Revenue Code. 
Ms. Luneman expressed commitment to developing guidance and resources to assist these legacy independent contractors in compliance. And so has the Small Entity Compliance Guide or Frequently Asked Questions document been reflected to provide this clarity? And is there any update on outreach to stakeholders? So, uh, Congressman, one of the most important roles of the Department of Labor is to make sure that working people in this country are protected. Our rulemaking is a part of that. To your prior question, I had an easier answer than retirement security, which is in the overtime threshold. That threshold is lower than it was in the 2016 rule. But when it comes to our outreach and compliance assistance, this is a My very important part of our work. My time has expired, and we'll have to submit the question. Uh, thank you. If, if you would submit your question, Mr. Wahlberg, um, to get an answer. Ms. Bonamici, you're recognized for